Hey everyone, this is Rishi, and this is going to be a video about how to read pulmonary embolism CTs. The target audience for this video is going to be an early radiology resident, ideally a first-year resident who's just starting to read PE studies. If you're a senior resident or attending, this will probably be mostly review for you. All right, so before even beginning to interpret this study, I want to make sure that the study is adequate. And the first thing that I look for to judge the adequacy of the study is motion. And there's actually two kinds of motion that you might see on these pulmonary embolism studies. And the first is respiratory motion. So if the patient is holding their breath and they start breathing during the study, their anterior chest wall will be blurry. You can also look at the lungs. And if you look at the lungs, then the vessels in the bronchi should be sharp. And if they lose their breath hold, then those vessels will be uh, blurry. The second type of motion that you might see on these is uh, cardiac motion. So because patients frequently present with tachycardia, this is actually pretty common. And cardiac motion doesn't affect both lungs equally. The most affected part will be the left lower lobe if there is significant cardiac motion. And sometimes the lingia can, can also be involved. After looking for motion artifact, the next thing that I do is I look at the bolus of contrast. So to do that, just scroll up to the pulmonary artery and eyeball it. And basically what you want is a nice dense bolus of contrast in the pulmonary artery, and not just in the central pulmonary artery, but you want that bolus to continue out into um, the distal pulmonary artery so you can check for small PEs. And in this case, the pulmonary arteries and the pulmonary veins are about equal in density, so there is some venous contamination. So that just makes it a little bit more difficult to trace out the pulmonary arteries, but it's still a diagnostic study. I tend to not measure the pulmonary artery to check the, uh, check the Hounsfield units, but if you have over 250, that should be okay. Just know that the Hounsfield units can be quite variable, depending on the KV that you're using. So I find ge that generally it's just easier to eyeball it and make sure you have a dense bolus of contrast. So if you don't have a good bolus of contrast, it's possible that um, your bolus tracking is messed up. So what, what that is, is the technologist to prepare for the study um, does a single slice through the pulmonary artery and draws a region of interest around the pulmonary artery. And then after that, contrast is injected, and that region of interest is monitored. And you can see it goes from 15 here to 31 to 95 to 166, and then the scan starts. Um, that's what's called bolus tracking. And you can see this is plotted out on a graph here. And at about 8 seconds, it reaches the threshold of 140 Hounsfield units, which starts the scan. So... Um, if, if your scan is off and, you, and your bolus is no good, check to make sure that the region of interest is drawn over the pulmonary artery and not another structure like the SVC or the aorta. Okay, now when it comes time to actually interpret this study, let's go back to the regular series here. And you want to first make sure that you're on the right window setting. So if you were to start out on a mediastinal or abdominal window, that sort of looks like this. And here the contrast is too bright. So let's, let's put up some numbers here. And you can see that my window level is 40 and the width is 350. So what you want to do is you want to widen the windows. And so I'm just going to widen the windows here so I could sort of see through that contrast a little bit. So now my window level is 86, but what really changed is this width. This width is now 881. So that allows me to kind of see through the contrast a little bit so that if there's a small pulmonary embolism, it won't be obscured by that dense contrast. All right, so once you've judged the adequacy of the study, once you've narrowed your windows, it comes time to actually look for pulmonary emboli. And the way I generally do that is I start central in the main pulmonary artery, then I move to the right, and I go up to the truncus anterior and the right upper lobe, and I follow the lobar and segmental um, vessels, the pulmonary arteries, out, and just look at all the branches. And 
scroll back and forth looking for filling defects. And in general, the pulmonary artery branching pattern will follow the same branching pattern as the bronchi, but there can be some variability. So just follow each branch out um, as far as you can see it. And depending on the study, that can be the segmental level or in some studies, the subsegmental level and beyond. Now, before completely clearing a patient and saying that they have no pulmonary embolism, it's important to look at the heart chambers. So in this patient, I'm going to look at the right ventricle. I'm going to look at the right atrium where there's mixing of unopacified blood coming in from the IVC. And then I'm also going to look at the left ventricle and the left atrium and particularly the left atrial appendage looking for thrombus. So before I clear a patient to go, um, I want to make sure that the heart chambers are clear of any uh, potential thrombus or uh, emboli. And then finally, the last thing I do before letting the patient go is taking a quick scroll through the lungs to make sure that there are no acute things like a large pneumothorax, a large pneumonia that might require that the patient uh, remain in the hospital. So, um, you know, these patients often come with vague symptoms and pulmonary embolism is one thing on the differential, but very close in the differential clinically for a lot of these patients are things like pneumothorax and pneumonia. So you want to make sure to look at the lungs before sending the patient on their way home. Now that you know how to check the adequacy of a case, I want to show you a case of an acute pulmonary embolism. So first of all, you could see that this is not the best case because even though there's no respiratory motion, the pulmonary artery is not very bright. It's just a little bit brighter than the ascending aorta, but it's still good enough to see the segmental and subsegmental uh, pulmonary arteries. And if I scroll down, what we'll see here in the left lower lobe um, is a low density filling defect. And this is um, in a branch that feeds all of the basilar branches of the left lower lobe. It's called the pars basalis. Now there's a couple different characteristics about this pulmonary embolism that I'd like to point out. The first is that the filling defect does not completely um, obscure the vessel. Uh, you could still see a little bit of contrast around the filling defect and that increases your diagnostic confidence that this is a true filling defect and not simply an artifact. And it also indicates that this is non-occlusive. So even though this is a pretty large pulmonary embolism almost filling up the vessel, blood is still able to get around it. The other thing I'd like to point out is that this filling defect is central in the vessel and it's not eccentric, it's not up against a wall. Um, so that, that is usually a sign that what you're looking at is an acute PE and not a chronic PE. All right, now I want to show you some artifacts that you might run into and how to get around them. Let's say you're evaluating this case, which is a different case, and you see um, some vessels here in the left lower lobe. If we keep scrolling. And you think that you have a filling defect. So the first thing to do is to scroll back and make sure that what you're actually looking at is a pulmonary artery and not a pulmonary vein. So you could see that most of these hypodense vessels that we're looking at here actually go to pulmonary veins, not all of them. But the second unusual thing about these vessels is that they all become hypodense at the same slice and if you keep on scrolling they all become normal at the same slice as well and when you see that it typically means that you're dealing with an artifact so if we were to put this on lung windows you could see that these vessels there's a lot of motion there and if we look at the left ventricle the left ventricle is in motion so this is an artifact from cardiac motion and there's no pulmonary embolism here. So the point is, if you see something and you're not convinced that it's a pulmonary embolism, first of all, scroll back and make sure you're in the pulmonary artery and not a vein. And second, check the lung windows to make sure that you're not looking at motion artifact. 
Okay, I think that's all that I want to get into for this video, which I really intended to be a nuts and bolts on how to check the adequacy of a PE study and what an acute pulmonary embolism looks like. Um, I'm going to leave the topics of chronic pulmonary emboli and right heart strain for another video. Meanwhile, I wanted to direct your attention to this article here, which is very comprehensive. It lays out um, a lot of the things that we discussed here, a lot of the pitfalls in the diagnosis of PE. It's from Radiographics from 2004, so it's a little old, but it's very comprehensive and it's still um, a very good article. Anyway, if you have any questions about this, feel free to email me. You can also direct message me on the About page of this YouTube channel or leave a comment. Thanks.